normally what you have here you have your oil rail on top of your injector it's having pressure to all four of the injectors it's that chamber the oil rail fuel rail whatever you want to call it it's on top here of your injector idle you have say 500 psi of pressure of oil pressure pushing up here just waiting so you have all this pressure waiting right here at idle 500 psi going down the road you're over 3000 psi it's waiting to push the fuel in what happens is the FICM sends a signal here because the FICM knows the timing and everything else. So the FICM sends a, a signal and there's a spool valve inside of here. What it'll do, it'll move for just a millisecond. It'll let that high pressure oil come into the injector all of a sudden. So, and this is separate inside here. It's separated. So the high pressure oil will come inside here and they got what they call intensifier piston. It looks kind of just like a nail would be on the inside of there. So you have what just visualize a nail. So you have the fuel pressure all right here. You have a nail on top. You have the high pressure oil here. The FICM says, let's go ahead and inject the fuel in it because it says, you know, it knows the, the position, crankshaft, camshaft position. It's time, the piston's coming up. So the, the FICM lets it, let the high pressure oil, high pressure oil comes in and goes on top of that intensifier piston inside that, on top of that nail. It'll push the fuel that's waiting right here down into the engine and will get combustion and it'll come back up. As long as we have 41 PSI of fuel pressure right here, when it comes back up, it'll instantly fill up the whole cavity around here and it's ready for the next time to keep on going and keep on firing the cylinder. If you start dropping below 40 PSI inside of here, then you, we don't get a complete fill. When it comes back up and it's ready, if the fuel's not sitting there waiting and all ready to come in, then we'll, we'll get a partial fill or a half fill. And if we don't have an injector that's all the way full, and it's partially there, well, we start to get misfires. With, not really a misfire, because diesels don't misfire. They don't run Richard Lean, so I shouldn't say that. But we don't get a good combustion. We don't get a good fire. We don't get all the power we can out of it, the good heat. So anyhow, we, we've got the cylinder that's not all the way full, and then we don't, we got performance issues. But what's more important than that, when we have low fuel pressure inside of here, now we have a cavity that's halfway empty. Best way I can describe it is like if you ever go to a door and somebody's on the other side, it opens up at the same time. You know, you're expecting the resistance, also it opens up easy. Well, it's the same thing. What's going on inside this injector? It's all calibrated and programmed and ready for the fuel to be full, and it's wanting to hydraulically push the fuel down inside of there. If it's only partially full, it still has the 500 or the 3,000 psi right there, and now all of a sudden it's empty. So when it lets that 3,000 pounds in there and there's no resistance, it'll just boom. It'll just easily push the intensifier piston down inside of there. So then what we happen have, I've seen these injectors fail from having low fuel pressure in 200 miles. So if you don't have your fuel pressure inside of there, it'll literally beat this injector to death. And nothing fixes that but replacing it and making sure your fuel pressure is right. So whenever you have issues, it's always important. Drive it, put a fuel pressure gauge on it, drive it under a load, and make sure it stays above 41 PSI. Otherwise, you're going to sell a customer who knows what, a 500 or a $5,000 job replacing all the injectors or whatever else you may do to it and he's back in a couple hundred miles a couple thousand and you got to tell me you need injectors again doesn't go over very well so check it under a load make sure your fuel pressure is good and make sure everything else is good and you won't be getting comebacks with it or if it's your own vehicle you'll be happy and also if you stay with the original equipment injectors you'll be a lot happier too fix it right once and you'll be you'll be happy you'll be down the road and not have to do it again so let's go ahead and diagnose this one a little more and go I'll show you how to do that takes the Ford IDS system to get in deep enough to diagnose it properly. Now there's ways you can go around it and try to do it by pulling codes or checking other stuff, but really when it gets down to it, you need a bi-directional scanner. Ensure the auto ingenuity does a great job. It can go in and do your injector electrical self test. You can monitor FICM voltage and check it that way. But once you really want to watch cylinder contribution and have it be accurate, and also be able to go in there and control the injectors to put them in what they call an enhanced mode where all the injectors get the same amount of fuel without the computer compensating then you need the IDS at least that's all, from what I know that's the only one that works I've tried the snap-on I tried auto ingenuity and even though they may try to watch sonar contribution it is not even close to being as accurate as the IDS system is so anyhow when I get one that comes in the um, you know I want to try to see the history of it ask the customer what's going on if they have aftermarket injectors I know I keep saying this over and over but if you see the emails I get you would know why because I see way too many failures of the aftermarket injectors 
So anyhow, I'll try to get the history of it, see what's going on with it, and go from there. The majority of your 6.0's misfiring is going to either be your injectors, what they call stiction, and they usually run rough when cold, or the Fickum voltage. Fickums are known to fail and drop the voltage, especially when cold. The injector is under the most stress cold, and so is the Fickum. So you want to watch your Fickum voltage when it's cold, and you want to do an injector electrical self-test when it's cold, so sometimes you can hear it. Now, if you don't have any tools, anything available, but you still want to at least do it or listen to it, I suggest watching my RevX video, because uh, on that one, I show how the injectors sound when they're sticking, and then after running the RevX through it, how they start to get better during the pre-cycle, the clatter that they make when you first turn the key on. So that's a good one to try to watch and get a before and after or sound of sticking bad injectors. And RevX does help with stiction. It's the best one I've had that works out there. Now back to what to do if you don't have any tools or a few things you want to do just as pre-checks anyways. So you got the vehicle, you verified it. It's cold the next morning. You want to just at least look at it, make sure the coolant bottle's full, that it's not that your problem is not coolant contamination from a bad EGR cooler. Head gaskets will not get into the cylinder cylinders. Well, factory head gaskets won't. Those black diamond ones, the black onyx will. They'll get in there and if they blow bad enough to get coolant in there. But if it's all factory, then you you want to check if your coolant bottle's full. And most likely you don't have a um, uh, issue as far as contamination as water getting in or quiz a customer you know make sure they didn't just fill it up too so anyhow we, we want to make sure that it's not contamination that's caused it you want to check your oil because remember oil is a hydraulic fluid on these engines on the 60 and 73s that'll run the the high oil hydraulic pressure pushes the fuel in so you have to make sure that you have good oil good base oil pressure that it's all changes so now we've if you verified your cooling system being full and not using coolant, you verify that your oil is the proper oil, the right amount. It's cold. A few things we can do here. One of them is we just want to verify the base engine. So we take the starter wire off here, squeeze it, take it out, and down there we're going to touch this to the positive and we'll listen to the way the engine turns. We want it to turn over nice and even. Because all we're doing right now is turning the starter. So we want the engine, all the comp if all the compression's the same, the engine's going to turn over just like did 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 Because every cylinder has the same resistance. If we get a man, did it then, did it then, then we have a oh, most likely have a base engine or a compression problem. So anyhow, let's crank this one over. Let's do the the test here and see how it sounds. This is the sound of one that has a base engine problem with poor compression. I'll just jump the starter here and we listen to it. Instead of having a nice even crank, we have this. The next one is we want to smell the fuel because if this has gasoline in it, it would cause random misfires all over the place. And depending on how much gasoline they have in it, a little bit is actually worse because they still drive it and the fuel washes the gasoline washes it down and starts to damage and wear the injectors where if they had a whole lot it'll run so bad it won't run properly so people that put in a gallon or two and then top it off are actually worse off than the ones that filled it up with it so to just check your gasoline just go back to the tank just pull your cap off and as soon as you pull the cap off stick your nose down inside of there and smell just get inside there take a whiff because if it has gasoline, you'll know. This, the odor is so distinct, you can tell that there's gasoline in there. So confirm that you don't have fuel contamination. And so now we, we can assume we have good base compression. We don't have gasoline contamination. Now we'll start doing some of the tests. First one, we're going to cycle the key and listen to how the injectors sound. Okay, I'm going to turn the key on and we're going to listen to the pre-cycle of the injectors when I turn the key on. Actually, I'm not hearing anything, so that's going to lead me more towards the thickum. That noise right now is a vacuum pump. I'm going to unplug the vacuum pump so that way you can tell the difference between 
with the, what the vacuum pump sounds like in the pickup. Pump's just a connector over here. I'm gonna cycle the key again and see what we hear. So what we do now is we'll check the Fickham voltage and go from there and see what this one's doing as far as the voltage is going. And still with that, you can do that with anything. It doesn't matter if you have the uh, something as simple as the scan gauge or you can have the auto ingenuity or like, again, I prefer the IDS just because of watching cylinder contribution and doing relative compression. So I'm gonna go ahead and watch, get the IDS connected and show the next test that we do. Okay, with the vehicle identified, we're gonna pull up any codes, see what it has. That way we know we can get a direction to go in. Even though just by doing our pre-checks here, we're suspecting a FICM just because of the way it sounds during the pre-cycle. But we'll check all the codes. That way if it gives us anything else to go on to, it always helps. Can't be too much information. Okay, as you can see here, we have a 266, which is for cylinder contribution balance, number two. Number five, contribution balance. Number seven. And number eight. So we have two each side. Afikums are also known for doing that because usually when they go out, they will. The most common by far is low voltage. The second most common is losing two per side. So we've got two and eight and five and seven. And also we have the 611 code. The 611 code mostly is set from low voltage, but the higher voltage 58 volt FICMs that people are trying to save for performance, they can also cause the 611 codes. So too high or too low a voltage will cause it. So we've got the uh, FICM voltage codes. And then we also have some throttle position codes. Right now for the running rough, we're going to go after the misfire ones and the 611 codes. So we'll try to monitor the FICM voltage and see what it is right now. One thing that's important when you're monitoring FICM voltage is that you monitor the input voltage. Because you want to have your voltage greater than 10 volts. And that way you have good voltage in, you can get possibly get good voltage out. So we'll go ahead and pull up a bunch of PIDs here. Since this vehicle runs, I'm not going to worry about ICP or IPR. Really just worry about the FICM because this one just misses real bad when you start it, which I'll show here in a minute. I'll go ahead and pull these up, cancel out everything but the FICM ones. So now we have these. And again, when the vehicle's cold, during the pre-cycle when it's first running is when you want to check this. So right now it's reading 47 and a half volts, which is good. Ford says anything above 45 volts is good. But I'm gonna go ahead and cycle the key and see what we get. And you wanna cycle the key quickly so it doesn't lose connection. So I'm gonna turn it off, turn it on, and then watch what happens during the pre-cycle clatter. And you can see there it's dropping big time. Went down to 34, it's bad. So this one, no matter what, we have to start off with a FICM before we can do anything else. The way I like to diagnose anything is fix the obvious stuff first and go from there. And here I'll show you what this one sounds like when it starts, just to give you an idea of what we're looking for. Because again, we have the low voltage. So let's go ahead and start this one up. Okay, here's something else we can do while it's running if it stays running long enough. This is what's really nice about the IDS system. This is live data watching which cylinders are contributing and how much, what they're doing. And as you can see, we've got number two down, all the other ones, seven, three, four, and five are great. And same way with six and eight are down. One of the other things that's really good about the IDS system, the Ford system here, this is supposed to represent a injector. Right now the computer can compensate and take away or give more fuel as needed to try to make the engine run at a perfect RPM. 
but the it's so the computer right now is trying to add more and take away more to get them all to be pretty much at zero percent but when I click this now what that's done every injector is getting the exact same amount no compensation in each one and so this is true if every injector had the same amount of fuel given to it is how much it's contributing so that's in the enhanced mode and then this is without it I mean it's not a big difference but remember too we don't have the voltage to run this properly and we may also have some bad drivers you see look going back we've got 30 volts powering this engine up and it's lucky to even run at all so I'm gonna go ahead and install one of my Ficums in it and then we're gonna retest it we're gonna check it listen to the uh, pre-cycle clatter then and also checking it to see if it makes any difference putting a properly rebuilt Ficum in there so I'm gonna go ahead and switch the Ficum out I'm gonna hit that now every cylinder has the same amount of fuel and you can start to see that I also want you to hear it that's why I got quiet you can hear it running bad and you can see three and fives missing so this right here is telling us which cylinder you don't want to just go and replace number five or number three you want to drive the vehicle and as long as you stay under 2000 rpms it, the IDS is very accurate on the 6.0 and you can monitor cylinder contribution so I'm going to give this a little bit of gas and as long as it stays blue it's accurate once it starts to hit yellow it's no longer accurate it's a caution there you can see there that it's dropping on three and five and then just to show you how it does that's the enhanced mode that's the mode they're all the same so we go back and another thing too again checking your ficum voltage because that's very vital to it we want to watch that especially at 2000 rpms so here it is reading 48 volts 47 and a half 48 And as you can see there, it never dropped under 47 and a half. Okay, one of the first things that I'm doing, keys are out of the ignition, so I know it's not going to start. Keys out, we go over here. Now this one has the aftermarket amp steps, that's why that's there, normally it's not there. We'll take it out, we'll thread it through. Now what I'm going to do is take this little tab in there and touch on the positive here. And what I wanna hear is how the engine sounds cranking over. So let's crank it. So now I don't feel that we have a base engine problem. Don't smell like contamination. Let's go ahead and go with a few other things. If you have fuel pressure above 41 PSI, you're getting a complete injector fill. It's usually not your problem. Now this truck does have an extremely noisy fuel pump, and it also looks like over here, it looks like it might have a head gasket issues, so or EGR cooler overheating issues. It has something else going on. But the main thing on this one, the customer just wants me to get rid of the misfire. It's his truck, his money, so I'm just, I'm going to do that, but also I figured it's an opportunity to make a video. So now, what I want to do here is turn the key on and listen to the, the injector clatter, the pre-cycle clatter when we turn the key on, how they sound. Okay, this one has the noisy fuel pump, that's what we hear right there, but also you hear that pre-cycle clatter didn't sound real bad but it was off a little bit so now we have a couple things next thing we want to check is the ficum voltage we want to make sure our ficum voltage stays above 45 so let's get, get the ids started up and start looking at different things the misfire and the ficum voltage make sure the ficum voltage is up because like i was describing the ficum moves that spool valve inside well if you don't have the proper voltage you're going to have misfires you're going to have issues with the the ficum not uh, moving the injector because remember voltages or as far as um, amperage and voltage that's all timing too if it's down it's not going to move you got weak or sticky injectors it's going to get worse so you want to make sure that your 
to the Ficken voltages is, is up. So let's go ahead. Well, I can show you a few other things too on this one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up here what to look at. And again, because we're looking for a misfire, I'm going to just pull up my, uh, mostly again, looking at the Ficken ones. But I want to pull codes so we get some hints here what to look for. Again, because if you don't have an IDS, if you have the code, that's going to be a great help. So make sure you get a good scanner that can do it. So I'm going to clear this. I'm just going to highlight my Ficum Sync power. So that's all my Ficum ones. Ficum Sync, Logic Power, Main Power, and Vehicle Power. That way we have no battery voltage and everything's good. IPR percentage. And then ICP pressure and volts. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this. But also what I want to do is back out of this just for a second. This guy has a high performance Ficum. IDS only goes up to 54 volts, and this one's it's so it's probably a 58 volt Ficum in there. So let's go ahead and um, this also will go to show you that putting a high voltage Ficum does not cure misfires. That's everybody says it does, but a high voltage Ficum doesn't do that much for you. The uh, so now we're going to go back in, we'll look at the here, we'll pull the codes up. So let's go ahead and get them here so that'll help to clue us in too pulling them up here okay here we have 401's and EGR flow code what this is is diagnostic trouble codes with technical service bulletins and special service messages this is just when it's real common they give you special things on it here's the one we want to go after everything with a P is powertrain um, so that, that's the ones we want to look for. So we go P0281. If we highlight it over here, it tells us what it is. So we highlight it P0281, cylinder 7 contribution of balance code. 401, that's EGR flow. Now, again, like what I said earlier, diesels don't run rich or lean. So uh, EGR code will not cause a, a diesel to run bad. So ignore that one. And in 2287, injection control pressure sensor. That's why we look at um, ICP voltage and see if it's bad. This truck's an 03, very common to leak through the ICP sensor. But now, mostly what we're going to focus on, again, because this video is covering misfires. So let's go ahead and go with the, uh, the cylinder number 7. That's helped clue us in. So now going back, some of our pre-checks. Here we have Ficken voltage. We make sure everything else is good. So let's go with that. Let's, I'm going to cycle the key because most of these things are under stress. Again, when it's cold and when you, during the injective cycle pre-clatter. So let's go ahead and watch this, the 54 volts, and see how far it drops. Ford specs is no lower than 45 volts. So as long as we stay above 45 volts, Ficum is good. Okay, there I cycled the key. It dropped down to 54 volts just for a second. So we can see that voltage isn't our problem as far as not dropping too bad, at least not now during the injective pre-cycle clatter. So we have, we know our Ficum voltage, at least right here, is good. So let's go and start want, going after the misfire and what to do. So we're going to go here, power train, power balance. This is what's great about the IDS. Nobody else would do this, it'd be this accurate. I know other scanners can do it, but they're not even close to as accurate as this. Ford's been doing this since 96. It's, this is one of the best things for us. So I'm going to go ahead. It wants me to start it, turn the key on, then hit it. So I'm going to go ahead start it up and then right here that's our firing order one two seven three four five six and eight so we can see number seven is dead but what else is great about an IDS system that's supposed to uh, sign, uh, be an injector well, right now the computer has the ability and the well the, the Ficum the PCM would tell the Ficum which one's misfiring and try to get more fuel. But when we do this, when we hit that, now in this mode, even though it didn't make much of a difference, it actually gave every cylinder now has the same amount of fuel. So they're all even. No more compensation out of the, the PCM or the Ficum trying to compensate for misfire. So we can see right now, number seven's missing. You would also, to be more thorough, you'd want to drive the vehicle and check it because, again, under a load, they might miss more. So drive it, make sure you just don't go throw a number seven injector in it and miss, you know, get done and realize, oh, three's missing too. And, and as long as you keep under 2,000 RPMs, 
this is pretty accurate. Once you start to get above 2,000 RPMs, it's not accurate, it can't tell. And I'll just show you here. Even though I have number seven dead, as you can see just right there, I was also getting five and eight. It's normal to have this pattern, that's like that. But when you start to see consistency like this, then we know we have issues. So, a couple things I wanna do here. So we know we've got seven that's completely dead and five and six are suspected. Again, with this thing having low fuel pressure, I wouldn't be surprised we have a lot of ruined injectors. Well, the fuel pump's making noise. I'm just assuming low fuel pressure until we check it. So anyhow, let's go out of this. Next test we're going to do here is actually listen to the injectors and see what they do. So I'm gonna go into self test. We're gonna go, here we go from power train, then to engine, and then key on injector electrical self test. Now what this will do, we need our ears. Don't count on what the computer says, computer's wrong. All it's telling us is I sent the signal out, I didn't get any bad feedback, but we gotta use our ears on this one. So anyhow, we got, we got it chosen. We're gonna go ahead and highlight it and then I'll go out there with the camera and listen to it. So it just wants us to prep it, make sure to inject the brakes on, and then go ahead and perform the test. So I'm gonna move the camera and then we'll go, then we'll listen to it. One, two, three, Four, five, six, nothing, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, nothing, eight. Okay, now from that we can easily tell that, well, we don't know. Do we have a wiring issue, a FICM issue, or an injector issue? This is where it helps you to have test parts or uh, whether you have a FICM. Now, two, if you have uh, a FICM any year, doesn't matter, 03, 07, they'll all run a vehicle. So if you have a spare FICM or another truck, throw it on there. But if you're working on these quite a bit, I suggest having a test FICM and also having a test injector. Because what I'm gonna do now, the easiest thing to do, especially being number seven, I'm gonna plug an injector in externally and listen to it and see, because that helps me to narrow down. Do I have an injector sticking or bad FICM or bad wiring? So next, next test here would be to plug the FICM in externally. The way I, I always remember this is I say the passenger is odd. That way the passenger side of the vehicle, odd cylinders. So we've got one, three, five, and seven. That's two, four, six, eight. So anyhow, seven being the last one back there, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it, plug my injector in externally, and rerun the test. Now also when you do that, take in consideration that you, you're moving your wire loom, so of course that could be giving you false readings too. But a lot of times wire looms aren't an issue. If it is, it's rats. So just look at it visually. If it's not bad, it's probably, if you don't see it down in this area, it's probably not bad. So let's go ahead and disconnect it and hook an injector up outside. Okay, now I have the injector connected outside here. So we're, this way, again, being the easiest thing. Now what's going on here, just remember, the FICM's taking the, we're asking the IDS to do the uh, pre-cycle test on us. What it's doing, it's taking the injectors, it's more or less taking the spool valves, going back and forth with it, and then it's going to fire, move all this, the injectors to one side, and then cycle them again, move them to the other side. So, you know, we use our ears, make sure that what we hear is what's actually going on. So with that injector outside, I'm gonna rerun the test. Also what I should say is the IDS show that last test is passing. Even though we know that it didn't do it, it did say it passed. Can you hear that one this time? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now with this, we know for sure that we have 
at least the bad injector. Now, a couple other tests are what I want to show you here with this IDS. It's really cool. Something else we can do with this. I'm going to go ahead and hook it back up. And I, I actually, I should have ran this beforehand, but I want to show you how I can do a relative compression test. It was also saying pass on the other one earlier. One thing I forgot to do because I was doing it with there with my ears. You can do this, and it's a whole lot more accurate than my ears are. Now, this is a really cool thing, another function that the IDS can do. And it's pretty accurate on the 6.0. On the 6.4, don't really count on the, this relative compression test. I, I've had it so far off on the 6.4, run me around in circles. So don't, don't count on it on the 6.4, but the 6.0 never had it let me down. So anyhow, powertrain, relative compression, tick. Now here it just wants us to uh, go through there, hold the throttle pedal to the floor. That's from the gassers that have a throttle plate in there. You want to get the air in there, obviously, to squish it. So anyhow, we're going to hold to the floor and then crank it. So here we go. Sometimes the battery drop and we do that. Let's try it again. It's not going to go through because the batteries are too weak. Okay, that truck, the battery was dead, so I went over here to another one. It's important, so I just wanted to show you this. I'll go back to that one and do my testing before I fix the truck. But anyhow, the same thing with IDS. We go into powertrain, relative compression, and we'll check it out here. Okay, then you can see here, once we've done it, it, what, it what it's doing is checking the engine speed, start to draw. It can take everything and put it in consideration and try to tell if we've got to cylinder down. That's why they call it relative compression. Because if one cylinder got easy or sped up what, during that while it was cranking, it'll tell you by how much. And once you start to see it more 2%, that's where Ford says we want to start looking at doing a manual compression check and seeing. But as you can see, they're actually all green. They all passed. But it's a pretty handy feature to have, other than using your ears to rely on here in the engine. We can use our scanner and do this, or the same way too. If we can go in there, we can check it and we can uh, monitor this and get an idea if we have a base engine problem before we sell an injector. So that's another pretty handy feature. So hopefully, if it's going over this, we I, hopefully I touched base enough and gave you enough information. If when you have a misfire, you know what to look for. Again, you want to look for contamination. It's cooling entering the cylinder, so you're not getting good combustion. So, you know, quiz a customer or yourself if you know you're using coolant. That could be causing you the misfire starting cold. The, um, so if you, if you don't have a problem with your fuel, you don't have a problem with the coolant entering the cylinder, let's go ahead and go out to the basic. Is your Ficum voltage good? The, do you have enough fuel pressure? Are you, all your injectors firing? Are they sticking? Check them cold. Just pretty much go over it the way I did there, and then you'll end up finding your miss, fixing it, fixing it, hopefully with just one part, one part only. Get the customer happy and yourself happy. So if you find these videos helpful and useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.